The plot synopsis in this video is taken from the Modern Warfare Wiki. Just a warning so I don't get in trouble. You know, just in case. Call of Duty is one of those game series that I used to always want to play, but mostly because I was jealous of the other kids in my class who got to play them. Same with Grand Theft Auto, but there's, there's difference between Call of Duty and Grand Theft Auto for me. See, with Grand Theft Auto, I stopped really wanting to play it, but with Call of Duty, my brother ended up being obsessed with it, so since I was older than him and it was in the house, I had an excuse to play it. But to be honest, I never really found time to do it. Let's be honest though, there's no time like the present, considering all of this quarantine and such. Now, the games I originally owned were Black Ops games and Modern Warfare 3. I spent countless hours on them. For example, me. Me and Evan played through the story of the first Black Ops. Uh, I've played the story of Modern Warfare 3 on my own, and we've done bots on Black Ops 3 and 4, and I've done zombies on Black Ops 2. Now, I was going to go with back to the original Call of Duty trilogy, but the second one isn't on PS3 and I refuse to buy crappy PC ports, so I can't play them. So where do we go from there? Well, the fourth Call of Duty game was Modern Warfare, so I guess I'll do the Modern Warfare series. So let's get started. The first thing we had to do was hunt, down the, hunt the game down. Since we had the third one, and I found the second one in my local game store. Store, I couldn't. It was really easy to get them, except for the first one. Then one day, while at an antique store, I found it. Weird place to find it, though. Okay. So time to put the game in. You know, considering we've talked about it, we found it. The next step is to put the game in and try it out. So first, we gotta find it. It's not, the, it's not over here. Definitely not over here. Not over here. Those are the DC stuff. These are the movies. Here it is. Which, where is it? Ah. Time to play. So as soon as I put the game in and, be and it begins to load, it crashes. I try to load it again and it says that an error has occurred during the start operation. Yeah, no crap. Let's try giving the disc a nice blow. After blowing the disc and putting it back in, my PS3 made a super weird noise and didn't load the disc. I decided to try turning my PS3 off and on again, and... It worked! So let's get into the game. So I boot up the game, get ready, get through the logos, and, su and such, and see the menu. Immediately I see something that's locked. Arcade mode. I decided to try the campaign first, since that's the story is usually what you would go through in a, in a game first. And so we go into a cutscene explaining some stuff, and then we have a training course that we, so we, that we can try out our skills. The gameplay is very strange. The default controls are to use the left and right button to shoot, and the triggers to throw grenades for some reason. So I turned it to default flip so I could fix that weakness. So after fixing it, we use the 6 to move, circle to crouch, square for action, or to reload, X to jump with the triggers to shoot. So uh, here's the story. We start with a tutorial. Now something I've always hated about the Call of Duty games is that the story isn't really spelled out or put in order, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. The levels are put into a weird timeline usually, and so we have to put, sort of put the story together. So my plan is to beat the story in the order that it comes in and talk about the levels. Prologue. FNG. This level is the tutorial for the game. Easy enough. You walk around, shoot some stuff, and learn how to do everything. After completing the tutorial, we get prompted to choose our difficulty. I chose Recruit because I suck at shooting games. Also, the army hates watermelons. Nice! Your fruit killing skills are remarkable. Crew Expendable. Taking place at night on a storm lashed Estonian freighter known as Valja Kutz in the 
Burring Strait, Captain Price leads a team of SAS commandos onto the ship. His team, including SAS newcomer Soap McTavish, rope down onto the ship's deck. Their objective is to recover a suspected nuclear device, which is hidden in a crate inside one of the ship's cargo holds. Captain Price and his team clear the ship's bridge and crew quarters quickly, then proceed through the cargo holds, killing all of the armed guards. They find the package, which turns out to be plutonium, but reports of fast movers approaching the ship mean they have to get out quickly. So Soap grabs the shipping manifest and they leave the ship. As they are leaving, the ship is fired upon by the unidentified aircraft. However, the team successfully extracts the ship from the ship in the nick of time as it begins to sink. The raid was a partial success, although they could not secure the nuclear device for safekeeping. The manifest seized by soap points to the Middle Eastern military and Cuba d'etat leader Khaled al-Assad as the intended buyer of the nuclear device. During the first actual level, I ended up cheating by jumping to a place I shouldn't have. Also, I died by walking the wrong way. Also, our character's name is Soap, which is what my cat litter smells like when it's clean. The Coop. The Coop is a largely cinematic level, uh, acting as the opening for the game. The level is used to introduce the player to the primary antagonist, as well as the opening credits. It is shown through the perspective of the President Yasser al Fulani, who is driven through a city captured by al-Assad and his military force. During the drive, al Fulani sees al-Assad's forces running up and executing people. These are like supporters of al Fulani. At the end of the level, al Fulani is executed by Khaled al-Assad with a desert eagle after saying the word since the help begins and we are to the camera with evan and we're gonna show off all the stuff we've gotten that we're gonna do reviews on possibly play some stuff we've already just stuff in general that we've gotten over the past probably month and i haven't gotten the chance to show off so first was just the other day just the other day Evan went to Goodwill, and he got Skylander Swap Force for the Wii. Now, we're not going to review it, because we can get it on the PS4 and make videos. So, if I do a review of it, it would be on the Wii, and then I would do footage from the PS4 version. So, yeah, it is possible that we'll play through it on the Wii. Next, we got a Blu-ray. I got a Blu-ray. Oh, right. So... These are, for those of you wondering, we we didn't just get the Skylanders game. We already had a giant box of Skylanders. But we got this new one. And then we already had this guy. And then we got a double. Um, also the same with this guy. I just don't know where his other half went. We also have in here some Trap Team figures. So I'm hoping to get Trap Team. Hmm. Here's the other trap team. And we also have our Disney Infinity figures in here. Like a Han Solo, Captain America. Uh, uh, here's here's my stuff. personal favorite Disney Infinity figure, which is Black Spider-Man. And then take your personal favorite uh, one of these. Probably a Raptor is my favorite Skylander, and my favorite okay. giant is this fire guy. The, my favorite uh, would definitely have to be Han. Anyway. My favorite's not Han. Uh, my favorite. No one cares about this your one. favorite. And then my other favorite for uh, uh, the stuff is. Okay. Anyway, we got a Blu ray here of The Dark Knight Rises. Which, if you come over here to my DC collection, I have Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. So The Dark Knight Rises means I have completed that trilogy. Um, next we got some PS4 games. Evan got two and I got two. So two of these are going to be on Evan's channel. One of the two of these are going to be on mine. So why don't you show off the two that you got, and then I'll show the one that, that I got. No, 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 I'm holding, I'll be your cameraman. Cut. Um, so I got Knack. It's not in the case because it's in our PS4 right now. We have been recording Knack lately. So yeah, I want to get Knack too. And I also got Last of Us Remastered. Now, I saw 
this one was 15 bucks. I saw the uh, original for PS3 for 10, but I'm like, well, remastered is one I've been playing at my uncle's, and plus, it's just better. So, oh, I got it. And then the two that I got are both rated M. I got God of War, which, yes, I will be doing a playthrough of at some point. I don't really know when. I'm Can more. And Dead by Daylight, which I actually have done, begun my playthrough of on some live streams. Hmm. Then we've got. What should I. Wait, let me look at this one, two. Okay, we got some DVDs. So um, I got Next Avengers Heroes of Tomorrow. I got Man of Steel. X Men Days of Future Past. The Wolverine. Joker. Batman and Robin. Batman and Batman Returns. Modern Family Season 11. And it chapter two. I'll go through these. No, 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 I want to. No. You, how about you do the ones you picked? I do the ones I picked. Okay. Let's separate them. So I'll put some. Well, Dad picked. Okay. The rest are mine. Okay, so you show off yours. I'll be your cameraman. UFC Undisputed 2009 is the first UFC Undisputed game. He also got a UFC game for PS4, but we we didn't grab it. We didn't show it. The case is broken. Okay, so he got a UFC game for PS4. Too. WWE game. Um. It's WWE 13. There's still tape on it. Mm -hmm. Uh, there it is. It's in there. Then we got Call of Duty Ghosts. He saw it for PS4 too, and I said he should have gotten it for PS4, but he got it for PS3. Yeah, because it doesn't have the proper case. Now we got Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Then these are the ones that I picked out. So as you can see, he picked out all M and Teen games. I picked out Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Assassin's Creed Revelations. Yes, I'm going to be reviewing all of these. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Assassin's Creed 2. And the first Assassin's Creed. As well as... I got this mostly for both of us, but you know. Batman Arkham Asylum. Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, which yes, I'm looking forward to playing. Little Big Planet. And God of War and 3. God of War 3. Thre. Okay, no, let's... Thore. Don't, don't add that to the pile. Yes. No, I can't carry all that. Now you're making a mess. Do what I say. Are we done? No. What do you mean? You've got two, we've got two more things to show. Oh. You know exactly what, now let me, we need to just, like... I don't know exactly what. Shh. No argument. I don't know exactly what, so... Here, just shove them all here, and I will... What'd you just do? Knock down your stupid gold steam that was in the way. I will s sort these. Okay. I don't know. You gotta help me more. Put that down. Put that down. Give them a review. That's not what a review is. Show them stuff. I'm gonna shove these all up here with the other DVDs and I will fix them later. Because I know that this is not where they go. What'd you just do, Evan? You're ruining my life, Evan. Get over here. Mm, I'm a pretty good cameraman. Stop. This is on footage. Give it to me. <laughs> Give it to me, Evan. No, I'm recording. I'm recording. I need to show them something. So, we also got some PS1 games. Trash can man. We got Gran Turismo. Trash can man. 
Crypt Killer. Trash Can. Or Project Overkill, which you might not have heard of any of those. Mm -hmm. But then we got Spider Man. And then Evan's got some seats. We can't play with those. Evan's got some CDs to show that he got. So let's move this box. I'm in. Let me see it, Billy. I'm in an encore. It's a deluxe edition. All of them are deluxe, aren't they? No, that's not how you do it. Remember? Oh, you're right. Stop. Stop arguing with people on camera, Evan. Two discs. And then he has a gun behind his back and then a gun in his mouth. Okay, what else did you get? Eminem Relax. That's not a new one. I know. I, you grabbed all my CDs. I just went with it. Um, what's this? Nothing, Evan. It says, text Eminem to 32123 for Eminem ringtones. I might keep that. It doesn't work, Evan. System of a Down Toxicity. Yep. Three Days Grace Life Starts Now. This is actually the smallest CD case, uh, I think, ever. Uh, then I have Eminem, the Marshall Mathers LP, not the second, and I'm upset, because I like the second. And also knows exactly why. I got, um, a WWE, uh, the music volume 9, it's called Voices. Uh, basically has, um, everyone's entrance music and stuff. I got Eminem Music to be Murdered by. There's a revolver and an axe back there. Then I got a Slipknot. This is, I have the special version of this. This is the first one, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have the special edition of it. My brother doesn't. So he's like, oh, do you want to trade out? <laughs> I'm like, no. I bought this with my own money. And then, and then I bought an Eminem recovery CD, but what came in it was a flippin' Michael Boobs Lay CD. <laughs> and I'm just like, why? Like, anyway, that is all for this little mini vlog type thing in the middle of so this I just video. Put the CD that, I, that I've made in here. Uh, see you all next, uh, in the next. See you all in like less than five seconds because we're still in the middle of a video. This is just in the middle of another video. Mm -hmm. Act one, blackout. Shortly after Al-Assad makes his move and overthrows the government of President al Fulani, the SAS learns that Nikolai, their informant, who provided the SAS with intelligence on their previous mission aboard the Estonian freighter, has been compromised and taken prisoner by the rebel forces. Realizing that the ultranationalists intend to execute Nikolai as a traitor, Price leads the rescue mission into the Caucasus oh God, to retrieve the informant, remarking that we take care of our friends. Inserting near Nikolai's position, the team first silently eliminates several guard posts before meeting up with Russian loyalist troops led by Sergeant Kamarov. Kamarov. It is clear from the discussion that Price and Kamarov, despite having fought a little alongside each other in the past, have very different objectives in this mission. For Price, Nikolai's survival is paramount and beyond all other considerations. Kamarov, however, hopes to free the nearby village from ultranationalist control and eliminate the threat posed by their BM-21s. Since both need the, the other's forces in order to be successful, a great deal of tension exists between the two men. As the loyalist troops make their assault upon the village, McTavish provides sniper support from a nearby ridge and eliminates the forces. An ultranationalist helicopter troops flanking from the left, allowing the loyalists to make greater gains in the village. Eventually, however, Gash, frustrated with Kamarov, stalling threatens Kamarov, successfully getting Nikolai's location out of him, a house at the end of the village. Abandoning their loyalist allies, the SAS team makes their way to the house. McTavish and Price enter the house as Gaz cuts the power. 
and the team successfully secures Nikolai. With the informant secure in the village and control the loyalists, the team is extracted by a helicopter that leads for a German safe house. So I was playing the level, and the helicopter crashed. Like, the helicopter came down, and when it came down, it crushed me. Charlie, don't surf. Reacting swiftly to the death of President Yasser al Fulani at the hands of al-Assad, the U.S. Department of Defense decides to launch an invasion in hopes of restoring order to the area and removing al-Assad from power. A large fleet of aircraft carriers, amphibious assault ships, and, all, and other Navy ships stationed in the Persian Gulf de deploys thousands of United States Marines, including the first Forest Renaissance Company, to a small coastal Gulf town via Black Hawk helicopters. According to the U.S. military intelligence and marine spotters, Al-Assad is broadcasting propaganda from a radio station in the west of the side of town. Flying through anti-aircraft and RPG fire, or RPG-7 fire, the Black Hawk helicopters managed to deploy the marines about 60 yards from the target building, with fast rope down to and proceed towards the HU building, or HQ building. The back door is breached and the raid is quick and decisive, but Al-Assad's body is not amongst the dead bodies. Receiving a report that Al-Assad is instead taking over a local television station half a kilometer east and is broadcasting from there, the Marines move to secure the new objective. Under the chaos of low-flying fighter jets and patrolling Blackhawks, the Marines prowl their way through the town, strategically defending themselves from enemy troops. After securing a bombed-out building and parking lot, they proceed towards the side entrance of the TV station. They breach and clear the first room and proceed to the main broadcasting studio, where they encounter heavy re resistance. After the main studio is list cleared, they proceed to the large open hall where the Marines regroup with their other team. The unit proceeds upstairs to the studio and busts down the door. However, Al-Assad is nowhere to be found again. In fact, the entire room is empty and the broadcast is simply on a loop. Despite the considerable losses inflicted upon Al-Assad's forces and the capture of the town itself as a front line for the main invasion, the battle remains a strategic loss for the Americans as the primary target has slipped away, presumably to the presidential palace, the Bog. The Bog follows Sergeant Paul Jackson's squad under Lieutenant Vasquez as they fight through enemy lines to reach and defend a disabled M1A2 Abrams tank with the call sign of War Pig. It starts out with Jackson's squad moving to the Bog to the tank is stranded and while encountering resistance. Jackson's squad is immediately ambushed by two heavy projected MGs. The squad splits in half. One squad advances on the enemy, while well, the other provides fire support. Upon entering the half-destroyed building, the Jackson can save Private Roy Switzwell whilst going up a flight of stairs while also killing all the Op 4 by using their own, own MG against them. After the ambush, the Marine squad once again faces a large force of, op, of op 4 supported by T-72 tanks on the highway overpass by using the FMG, or FGM-148 Javelin. Jackson dispatches each of the enemy tanks in turn. With this threat neutralized, the squad then hurries over to the to a war pig, where they, as well as the surviving marines of Alpha Company and the Bog, hold off attacks from the Op 4. So the Op 4 charge with the one M1 Abrams mercilessly with the C4 packs, the marines succeed in holding them off and driving them back further. After rescuing the war pig, Jackson is called upon to, to destroy a nearby ZPU and plant a beacon to receive air support from AH-1W Super Cobras, which clear building the squad cannot attack. The arrival of air support finishes off their remaining out for resistance and sends a few survivors fleeing. With this done, the squad regroups and sets up a defensive perimeter, allowing the engineers to come in and repair the damaged tank. Hunted. Hunted continues where the mission Blackout left off. On the way to Germany's safe house to deposit Nikolai, the occupants of the helicopter spawned a bright light coming into the sky. A stinger missile was heard and the helicopter was hit and shot down. SAS trooper Paulson and pilots die in the crash. Leaving Captain Price, his team, and Nikolai forced to make their way to safety through fields and shacks in order to avoid the notice of a helicopter sent to search for survivors. The helicopter eventually notices them and they have to cover, use cover to advance and avoid fire from the helicopter. After storming a barn, Soap successfully destroys the helicopter using a stinger missile he found in the barn. After heading out of the barn, the squad is met by a huge convoy of enemies that is decimated by heavy fire from an AOC-130 gunship. The player then continues the operation as the Spectre's TV operator in the mission Death From Above. Death From Above. Death From Above carries on from the previous mission Hunted. The player, assuming the role of a gunner on an AC-130, protects Captain Price and his team as they make their way through the 
an enemy controlled village, clearing out enemy defenses and offering some powerful close air support as the SAS team makes their way to the extraction point by foot and by truck. Arriving at a local junkyard, the SAS team must hold off a considerable enemy assault with, with the uh, aid of the gunship until they can be rescued. Eventually, the group is saved and they make it to the German safe house. So I'm playing the game, I get on that level where you have to aim and you have to make the characters move and stuff. And for some reason, uh, I, uh, I couldn't get past it, so I got my brother to come down and help. And as, as he's trying to help, he basically couldn't do it. And it took us 17 minutes to actually complete it on one try. And then the other times took us longer. So it took us probably about 40 minutes just to beat the one level. And that is completely ridiculous. War Pig. The level starts in the bog in which the bog ended. War Pig has been fixed by the engineers, and now the squad has to push forward into the enemy territory. After defeating a counterattack on their position, War Pig and Lieutenant Vasquez's squad move down the street. After clearing the main street, the team eliminates the enemies which have gathered in two buildings which are heavily guarded by, but with troops and machine guns. After killing all enemies and destroying an enemy tank, Vasquez and Sergeant Paul Jackson leave to finish off Kaladao Assad. Shock and awe. Sergeant Paul Jackson and the rest of, L of Lieutenant Vasquez's squad joins in, on a, in an attack on what they believe to be Coward Acid's, L Acid's position. Jackson provides firing support with an MK-19 while grenade launcher, or grenade launcher on a CH-46C night whilst fo First Force Recon attacks Al Assad's capital city. After up unloading half of their chalk, Vasquez and his team relieve a squad which is a the advanced team that is being attacked. Cobra helicopter Deadly came by after refueling and rearming. After clearing the area, the Marines start extracting from the city due to a nuclear threat discovered by SEAL Team 6 in the city. As they are leaving, Deadly is shot down and Vasquez's squad stops to rescue the pilot. Whilst they are leaving the city, the nuclear bomb is detonated. detonated. The blast wave causes the helicopters to crash, eventually killing the player about 30,000 other U.S. troops and remaining op force soldiers. Aftermath. Sergeant Paul Jackson awakens from the crash after Khaled al-Assad's nuclear warhead was detonated from the previous mission, shock and awe. Mortally wounded, he crawls out and around the town CH-46 C-9 into the wasteland left by the blast, while buildings can be seen collapsing. His squad members, such as Vasquez and Pelayo, are, either see are seen either dying or their dead bodies lying around the area. After Moving away from the helicopter, he collapses and comes to his wound. The screen fades away slowly as the satellite lists his status as killed in action. The consequences of the nuclear explosion as depicted in this level are had prompted General Shepard to, to initiate the Russo-American war to attest the American military's true strength and to build his country's morale. Act 2. Safe House. Nikolai has told Captain Price and his team that Khaled al-Assad may be hiding in a safe house located in Azerbaijan which is used, he has used previously. McTavish and the team get dropped off at the small village where they believe Al-Assad is hiding. The team, supported by a Russian loyalist squad member, his name is randomly generated, and a helicopter search the buildings for Al-Assad while attacking the ultra-nationalists, who are protecting him and killing the villagers. They search through four safe houses, each one containing ultra-nationalists. Eventually, they find Al-Assad in the last of the buildings. Price kills Al-Assad's bodyguards and then tackles Al-Assad to the ground and continuously punches him. Soon, Price ties Al-Assad to a chair for interrogation, demanding to know who gave Al-Assad the bomb, punching him again and again. A cell phone rings, in which Gaz picks it up and tosses it to Price. Price listens and then gets mad. He then turns to Al-Assad and kills him by shooting him with his pistol. As Gaz, Gaz asks who was on the phone, Price says that it was Imran Zekov and finds out that he is the leader of the Four Horsemen. All gill it up. The year is 1996, 15 years before the main events of Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. The British government had authorized an assassination order. Price, who was then a lieutenant, is placed under the command of Captain McMillian. The two, wearing ghillie suits, must make their way to a hotel vantage point and wait for the target, Emran Zekov. Unlike the typical mission introductions of Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, which seem to be high tech large computer screens, the briefing for All Gill it Up is in print map with photographs pinned on it. Also adding to the transition from the modern 
Also adding to the nostalgia of the flashback, the briefing makes the transition from the modern screen to an old-fashioned film reel projector with cue marks. Then the mission starts in black and white before immediately transitioning into color. One shot, one kill. Lieutenant Price and Captain McMillian patiently wait on the top floor of the hotel with a Barrett 50 cal sniper rifle for three days. While the assassination target, Amrin Zakov, is attempting to sell uranium fuel rods to Russian ultranationalists, Lieutenant Price takes the shot and dismembers Zakov's left arm. The cover is blown when an enemy helicopter returns fire, which Price promptly shoots down by sniping the pilot. A second helicopter locates the two and opens fire on the hotel. The two rappel down the side of the hotel as the top floor collapses and, and continue to escape to the distraction point. It is later revealed that Zekov survived this seemingly fatal blow. They fight through ultranationalist forces. Um, and attempt to lose them through apartment buildings. They are then spotted by another helicopter and they manage to shoot it down, but it crashes towards Price and McMillian. McMillian's leg is injured and by the helicopter's debris and is unable to walk, so Lieutenant Price must carry him to the landing zone. When they arrive at the extraction point, which is at the Ferris Wheel in Pripyat Amusement Park and wait for the chopper to arrive, waves of ultranationalists retaliate. They hold off until the chopper arrives and now Lieutenant Price and Captain McMillian are lifted to safety. Heat. The level starts off with Captain Price, Soap, once again controlled by the player, and Gaz and Gaz and Arem charging down to defend the hill, with Mac providing machine gun covering fire. The original plan is to deploy charges, anti-personnel explosives at Phase Line Alpha near a church and Phase Line Bravo near a tavern, then to hold out until extraction at a landing zone at the top of the hill. However, after the simulist don detonations at Alpha, simultaneous detonations at Alpha. The enemy, mistaking the SAS team for a much larger force, eventually resort to the mortars to fight them, force them back. They tower them into a minigun inside a crashed Black Hawk helicopter, holding off the enemy until enemy helicopters start deploying troops. Once Soap and the rest of the SAS soldiers reach the phase line Bravo, he has to use four detonators, one in each of the four windows of the second floor in the tavern to manually detonate the Bravo charges. They retreat up the hill once more to the barn near the village, after which the team holds off the enemy and allows Soap to use a javelin missile system to take out the four enemy T-72 tanks. However, despite the clearing of the enemy armor, the evacuation helicopter pilot deems the landing zone too hot with multiple SAM launchers across the mountains, and the team is told to go for the landing zone they used the night prior at the lakeside gas station within four minutes or be left behind. Despite Gaz's anger having to go back down the same hill just to see the enemy, Soap takes point and leads them down the hill. Sergeant Griggs and his fellow Marines cover the SAS as they aboard the helicopter. All are successfully, evacu successfully evacuated except for Mac, who is presumed to have died during the fire support for the squad. The Sins of the Father The mission begins with the player in control of Soap along with the other SAS, Russian loyalists, and Marine forces proceeding silently towards an enemy checkpoint. On Captain Price's signal, they take out all the guards, then charge into the enemy's clothing and wait for Victor Saka Zacho to arrive. When he arrives, the team takes down the ultranationalists, but Victor man makes his escape, leaving John Zop Soap McTavish and Griggs to chase him down. He runs to an adjoining town where ultranationalists cover him as he flees. He runs into a partially destroyed building while Soap's team gets support from an American helicopter, call sign Vulture 1 6 to take out enemies and track Victor through the building. Once they wipe out all the enemies in the building, they corner Victor Zekhov on the roof and attempt to restrain him. He then takes the opportunity to shoot himself. As the mission ends, Gaz tells Price of his disappointment and remarks that his son was our only lead, sir. Price, however, correctly replies, forget it, I know the man. He won't let this go unanswered. Let's go. Act 3, Ultimatum. The team parachutes down the starting point but realizes that Griggs is missing and has triggered his emergency transponder. The team tracks the signal town to a small village. The team then systematically clears each building. When they fi finally find and rescue Griggs, the team makes their way to an electric tower which Soap brings down with C4, disabling the power long enough for another team to infiltrate the nuclear facility. Captain Price's team then fights their way into a group of buildings, separate, and then encounter separate and then encountering hostiles dropped by in by helicopter along the way meet up with the american sniper team as they rendezvous they witness the launching of two missiles from the nuclear facility emory and Zekhov's revenge for the death of his son the missiles head towards the eastern united states with casualties projected to be approximately 40 million all in 
Two nuclear ICBMs have just been launched by the ultranationalists and it has been confirmed that they are heading straight for the eastern seaboard of the United States, where they will claim the lives of 41,096,749 Americans if they reach their targets. The ICAP base command is working with the Russian loyalists to get the miss missile abort codes, while both the SAS and the USMC of the ground teams attempt to enter the launch site where they can enter the abort codes. The two teams get to the launching facility, but unfortunately, there are numerous guards blocking their path and three BMP-2 light tanks. They go through to launch two launch sites where John Soap, McTavish, and Griggs destroy the armor while the rest of the team take out the men. After much fighting, the soldiers finally get to the vents, cut them open, and begin to repel down to the ICBM facilities to disable the missiles midair. That triggers the start of the next mission, no fighting in the war room. No fighting in the war room. Captain Price and the team crawl through the vents as the Marine forces engage the enemies from below and provide security overwatch and then drop down to infiltrate the mission control silo. They fight their way through, shooting the many, many enemies that are defending the main control room. The team has to work fast lest they, be, they risk being killed by another missile, of which the fire would burn by another missile. Wait, what? By which the fire would burn the entirety of the place. Once they reach the secure room, they will move on to a large blast door which Gaz opens. Once through, they wipe the remain out the remaining enemy troops and blow a hole through the wall with C4 giving the team access to the main control room where Soap types in the abort codes. Once they have saved the 41,096,749 people, they see Emmer and Zikov leaving in a helicopter. The team briskly leaves and ready to make their getaway. Game over. This mission starts with Soap, Captain Price, Gags, Gaz, and Griggs, and a UAZ-469 escaping the launch facility after the events of no fighting in the war room. Aside from the UAZ, there are two other UAZs loaded with USMC and SAS units who split up with Soap and the others. After a certain point for the first part of the mission, the player will face a number of trucks la laden with armed ultranationalists while speeding down a set of roads and or a, or a Russian mo motorway. After eliminating the trucks, a hind emerges and attacks the player. Some time later, the hind flies off, only to destroy a bridge, preventing Zilp and the rest of the SAS from escaping. The team is cornered by ultranationalists and have to defend themselves on the broken bridge until a fuel tanker behind them explodes, injuring everyone. So briefly loses consciousness, but quickly awakens to see Griggs trying to pull him into cover while firing his nickel-plated M1911 at enemy forces. Once Griggs flies off, Griggs flies off all of his rounds, fires off all of his rounds, he switches to his M249 saw, turns and begins to fire, but is quickly shot in the head. Soon after that, Captain Price is incapacitated and Amun Zekov, along with two international soldiers, move in to finish off his gas and two other SAS members. But before they can execute Zope, they are distracted by a loyalist MI-28 Havoc coming to the team's aid. During the distraction, Captain Price regains consciousness and slides Zope a fully loaded M1911 allowing them, him a chance to shoot them. After killing Zekhev, the loyalists Nemendi back open to safety, and as a Russian medic is even attempting to revive a seemingly unresponsive Captain Price. As Soap is leveled up to the helicopter, he passes out, and a British newscaster is heard telling the world about the events of, in Russia, as well as the search of a cargo ship lost in Burring Strait being called off. Epilogue, Mile High Club. The player is an unnamed Task Force 1 for 1 operative, paddling through a double-decked aircraft to rescue a hostage in a set time limit. The time limit varies by difficulty. 3 minutes on recruit, 2 minutes on regular, 1 minute on, and 45 seconds on hardened, and just 1 minute on veteran. When the player reaches the objective, two big doors open revealing the hostage being held, being held a human shield by the end enemy. The game enters slow motion and the player has to drive out the side of him. The player has to shoot him either in the head or the legs, although a veteran difficulty shooting and him in the legs will result in a mission fail message on screen within five seconds. The player will then be given uh, have a 30 seconds to jump out of the plane by a breach with the VIP and other Task Force 141 operatives. The level features no fragmentation grenades and no explosive weapons of any kind, although flashbangs are still available. Multi time for now that we have done the story, it is time for us to talk about multiplayer, the part of Call of Duty that everyone wants to see. So the thing is, I seem to have a cursed copy of this game. See, I tried tons of times to play the multiplayer, but it crashed several times. Anytime I tried to load it, it would just load and then it would kick me out. It would just freeze my TV and everything would just break. I only ever managed to do a few local matches with my brother, which were not fun because there was no bots. It was just me and him running around a map. And I did one online match, 
which wasn't very fun considering I had a really toxic player I decided to camp, and their name, um, I kid you not, was Trump for four more years. In short, Call of Duty Modern Warfare has a fairly interesting story, and I didn't really get to experience the multiplayer, so in general, I give Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare a 7 out of 10.